Good afternoon, welcome. It's auction week, it's Tuesday, it's the session with the loom plotters. Yes. Hello, How are you gentlemen. Very good, good. Very good, very good. It feels like it's been a while. It has, but we were has here last two week. Weeks. No, you two, two, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, okay. Oh, oh. And you came to the event. We yeah. did. Oh, it was and fantastic. we still found our way here. Can you yeah. yeah. After such a long time. I know. How are you, gentlemen? <laughs> good, good. Did you enjoy well. the event last week? It was lovely. It was so nice. Fantastic. Yeah, I had a had good time. A and the video you posted on YouTube. You saw the video. It was great. Yeah. It was fantastic. We actually wanted to record a podcast during the time, but we completely forgot. Really. Yeah, and then every and time I turned it, we go up to somebody <laughs> and ask them about something. It was yeah, yeah, it's so much time. Today, right? A bit, a few interviews. Tried, we will use them. So everybody who got interviewed, you will be live sometime. But, um, some point. Yeah, it wasn't an entire episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, because some, we are so busy chatting. Parts parts. Yeah, it was so nice. So this is auction 22. Uh, I think this is our biggest auction to date in terms of number of watches. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, what do you gentlemen think of this auction? Very nice. Good deals. A lot of things, yeah. And then some vintage pieces, some modern pieces. I mean, brand new pieces that we come, come to later that is just yep. being re uh, released. Released. Everything's in there. There's lots of uh, ladies' pieces as well. There's, there's a big variety. So there is lots of ladies' pieces. Not lots, but there is but some. There's a few, yeah, yeah. yeah. I often get told there's not enough ladies' pieces, so... Well... Hey. Ralph says we're good. There are a few. Pretty good ones. They exist. So if you mm. could sum up the au this auction in one word, what would you say? A lot. A lot of different <laughs> stuff, I should say. There's vo variety. Well. Variety. One word. One variety. It's tough to get Martin to stick I, to one word. I would say look closely. Look closely. Mm. Two words, but we'll let that go. Okay. Oh, that means there's hidden treasures. Yes. There is in, absolutely. And we'll, we'll mark out a few for you. Today. All right. Perfect. So that's a good intro. So each of you have selected, I think you said seven watches yep. based on seven different categories. That we arbitrarily randomly came up with. Okay. Right so let's start. Someone's phone. Is it the missus? No, it's a random number. All right, so let's start. Um, I think the first and the strangest category I think was, was chosen today. Let's start off with that one. Your favorite pink watch. There was two pink watches <laughs> in the auction. And so had to, yeah? I kind of had, we felt the need to talk about pink watches. Why not? So let's go. So pink let's watches. Start off with Martin then. So I have a watch that actually belonged to me. Um, which I then traded to Timepiece 360. So in the description, should we say it as is, worn by? As worn by, my, so that, that should increase the value, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, well, it wasn't worn by me, it was worn by my wife. Uh, sh I should say it wasn't worn by anybody because we bought it brand new and she never wore it. Um, and then I lost money on it. Nonetheless, that's I not, think it's an absolute, absolute bargain at what it is right now. Uh, 2,900 dirhams. And I think it's a steal of a deal. Retail is around 11,000. Um, is a full bronze case and bracelet. I have included an additional Perlon strap with the bronze buckle as well, which is also uh, from Oris. That alone cost me 600. And a signed autograph. And I'll put in a signed <laughs> autograph. But although it's not my watch, they bought it for me. So it's yeah. Timepiece 360's watch. Um, but this pink dial, uh, my wife wanted a pink dial. It's a candy pink. It's absolutely stunning. Um, uh, it's, it's just such a cool piece. I love it. Um, unfortunately, she did not love it as much as I did. So, yeah. okay, to go. Good intro. And All right. Well. Yes, I I thought if you go pink, go big, right? So um, <laughs> I chose this. If you go pink, go Frank big. Frank Miller Vanguard Lady Swatch. It's a nice rubber strap with a with a leather leather cover here, and of course it's solid gold, white. I think ceramic case uh, has this factory diamonds all over it and even nice detail on the little pin buckle you have a couple of diamonds there too so that's a really stonking watch i mean that is a statement piece yeah it's an aftermarket oh it's aftermarket it's, yeah it's, wow it's, it's so well made it's i wouldn't have i wouldn't have. seriously yeah i wouldn't have thought that it's so well made ah, see there, there you go uh, no, but I love a, the colors on the dial right it's a it's yeah, yeah solid gold, solid gold with aftermarket uh, bezel and dial. So it's so well made that I wouldn't have thought it was after. You'd be paying That's three times the price of it. All oh, right, okay. The real deal. Good, How much good would you deal? Say forty-seven like thousand, starting at forty-seven thousand. If you were to buy this from Frank Mueller, I iced out. I believe iced out will probably go for above one hundred and fifty. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's still a beautiful watch, and yep. I think, yeah, it is flashy, but well, you wanna if you want to 
Oh, and the peak you strap know, is cool. Like I that, have yeah. to say it's super, super nice. Cool. Yeah. Suits Dubai, huh? Yeah. It's very Dubai Dubai and blingy. Dubai oh. bling. Dubai right? bling. <laughs> All right. So keeping with the slight bling, let's move on to gold. Solid gold watches. A, sing, uh, a gold watch from the auction. Mm. What would you pick? Starting off with Mr. Ralph. Okay. We have here this absolutely fantastic watch. It's a solid gold case, but it's more like a cage. It has even a sapphire crystal on the side, so you can see the entirety of that wonderful movement, which is a quorum. Um, one bridge movement, so everything, the entire movement is on this long strip on that, in this case here, so just a little thing here in the middle is actually the entire movement. Why do they call it the golden bridge? Because th this is considered to be a bridge, yeah. right, the one, one part of the movement, as you can usually see the different parts of the movement being screwed into the back of the case, um, and this is just one bridge and it's golden, so it goes from left to right, or from top to bottom I mean and uh, it's consisting of only one single bridge instead of three bridges, which is the normal way of watchmaking. You have the crown here on the top, and it's really nice solid gold watch with uh, four sides sapphire crystal, top, bottom, left, like and right. Like a 360. Uh, uh, it's amazing. I mean, and, and, and this, yeah, this movement is a sight to behold. It's Could you pull amazing. it off? Ooh, yeah. Would, would it be a watch you'd consider wearing? Or is it quite I do have a solid gold watch, so I wouldn't mind. Um, actually, yeah, why not? Because this, this case is nice and round yeah. shaped, so actually it, it doesn't look too, yeah, too weird. It's actually fine. It, with gold, you always have to check if the gold matches your skin tone, but in this case, you know, come here, test it out. I put it on the wrong way. That's it's very it. similar to the Vanguard. That's right. Yes, it looks a bit like the Vanguard from Sunday. It hugs the wrist yeah. nicely. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Definitely nice statement. Nice option. Martin. My choice was this weird solid gold Harry Winston uh, piece. And for those of you that know, Harry Winston had a line of watches um, when Max Busser, who founded MBNF, came to work for Harry Winston. Um, he created a line of watches called the Opus. This is not one of those Opus watches, but uh, Max Busser took Harry Winston to an extreme haute horology uh, level. So you basically end up with that same level of provenance um, with this watch. There's an insane complication going on here. It's a seven day power reserve, first and foremost. You have your 12 hour dial on the side here. You have a uh, uh, the moon phase indicator date. But the cool thing is you have a travel time indicator or a GMT time indicator on the side here, but it is a retrograde mm -hmm. indicator. So it counts up to 24 and then bounces back to zero. Very cool. So it's a ridiculously cool complication. I mean, I've never seen another retrograde GMT like this before. Very much. And for an incredibly good price for a solid and gold. And that's what I'm getting to. It's once again solid gold. It's a big, chunky solid gold. You have this beautiful display case back. I don't know how well you can see that right there. Um, but what it comes down to is the price that they're asking, I believe, is 35,000 dirhams. Starting at, yeah. Starting at um, in the auction, which this watch was. An easy 100k, I would say, when it was minimum. sold. Minimum. So that's such a ridiculous depreciation over time. Yeah. And it's oh, a, a 2006. Yeah, and it's a great absolutely. deal. Because no, once again, you fantastic. pick this up for 35, you will never again lose a penny on this. This no. will hold 35, if not you know, even going up. And more so than that, uh, it's what you get for that money, right? It's for so the cool. In terms of this the is brand, the history, yeah. the complication. I mean, Harry That's Winston special. is uh, an insane jewelry maker, yeah. right? So it's such a cool combination yeah. um, of, of you know, jewelry slash horology. I can't see you wearing it, Martin. No, it's not for me, but it's definitely for somebody. All right, next category. I'm trying to remember what categories we said. Let's do entry-level watch. Did we say or no? No, no we didn't say entry-level. What we did had we say? Good deal. Good, good deal. deal. Let's do that one. Because okay. deals are, you know, they're, they're uh, not, not uh, they don't have to be cheap to be a good deal, okay. right? So his good deal is, is in a different price category to my good deal. I'll go first on it and then you can yep. hammer it home with yours. But I chose this Must Cartier, Must de Cartier tank. Um, it's a Vermeil, 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 whichever, Vermeil. depends if we're French, French or not. Vermeil. Uh, Vermeil, I don't know how to pronounce it, whatever, I'm not French. Um, so, things that I noticed that I did not notice um, over on the auction site. Um, first and foremost, 
so what is vermeil? I'll say it in, in the Queen's tongue. Uh, it is basically like a plating process, but instead of plating uh, what normally would be a bronze or a copper with gold, they, this is solid uh, sterling silver, then covered in a thick, chunky layer of gold. Ah, so it's silver and gold, I didn't know that. essentially. So it's a much more expensive process than uh, gold plating would be. Of course, Cartier being Cartier, they didn't want to have gold plating. So they wanted precious metal and then covered by precious metal. Um, and what I didn't notice online, I don't know how well you can pick this up, but look at that spider cracking on the dial. So generally, right there you saw it for a second. Um, when you move the dial, you see this is a lacquered dial or enamel looking dial, lacquered. You see these cracks that have formed with time in the dial itself. So the, basically the paint is cracking, which gives it what you know, we call the kind of a spider webbing effect. And it looks super cool. It gives it a very vintage -y style. Um, Cartier strap, which is still in very good condition. This, pro this watch is, I don't know if we have a date on here, but I'm guessing uh, it's going to be 80s, early 90s. I'd guess so, yeah. 80s but or 90s. Super cool, I love <laughs> and it. And the bargain is what? Oh, the bargain. The bargain part, 2,500 dirhams. Wow. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's nice. Yeah. My, bargain, my, ba my bargain, a little bit. Bargain is uh, for 100 times as much. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's 55,000. Okay. More. 200. Yeah. 20 times. 20 times as much. 20 times. times. Ah, today math is not my friend. This is a Patek Philippe Gondolo. Manual wind, white gold case, art deco style. Super square thin. Square with a beautiful sunburst dial. Nice and thin. You have the manual wind movement on the back. Patek, is it the Patek seal or the Geneva seal? I don't know, but it is on the dial. So you have either, either or. I don't know at the time. Of they replaced it already with the Patek seal on the right, this watch. But it's extraordinarily well hand finished manual wind movement, white gold watch from Patek Philippe. Looks really nice. It's, it's nicely shaped as well, so it, it hugs your wrist. It looks wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's just an, an amazing watch for the money. 55,000 gives you, I, I don't know what other Patek Philippe can get you, a precious metal Patek Philippe. That is so nice and wearable, with a with a lovely blue, sporty looking like a reverso sort of yeah. vibe. Wonderful. And it's a Wonderful square watch. movement as yes. opposed to a round movement in a square case. Square movement, manual manual wind, uh, extremely well decorated. You know what? Stopped it? What the gun? The gun? Yeah. I think it's still is. going. Isn't no, it? no, it's, it's discontinued. Yeah, when? Recently, right? 2017. Yeah, yeah, so okay. Discontinued edition. What what year is this? Oh, yeah, but it's it doesn't matter. It's no, a Patek it's, Philippe. Uh, no, no box. Yeah. So, but yeah, beautiful. super beautiful. Yeah. The, the thinness is what takes you know. The, really and you can get around. some Patek Philippe's for for lower prices, but nothing precious metal like and in, in, in a good condition like this is wonderful. Looks like unworn. Very Except the strap. Yeah. All right, let's move on to chronograph. Okay. So, I start okay. quick, it's easy. It's uh, what it starts at about eight thousand dirhams, and yeah, eight thousand dirhams at the moment, uh, seven thousand nine hundred. It's a El Primero from from Zenith. Enough said. Huh? Classic. Yeah, exactly. Enough said. Open heart, so you can see the thirty six thousand vibrations per hour ticking away. Um, Their lovely automatic movement chronograph with a classic silver dial and a different shades of blue uh, subdials. Sorry, one black, one blue subtitles and the open heart here. Beautiful, beautiful. Lovely watch. That's all I have to say because yeah. it's just a big bargain. 42 millimeters, so for if you have the wrist, oh, lovely, lovely watch. Okay, I'm going. Uh, there was a number of chronographs uh, from Omega in this auction. Um, vintage Speedmasters, all the way to brand new ones, uh, including the, the current iteration. But I chose one that's a little bit different. This is one of the watches that I really like. It recently discontinued. I think in 2020 it was discontinued. This is a 2020 model. Um, and this is the FOIS, the first Omega in space. Um, it's different than the other one because of um, the size is a little bit smaller. This is the original size, which was 39 millimeters. Um, they switched to 42 millimeters a few years after the, the start. So this is slightly smaller for people that cannot 
wear the bigger size, but also it still has the hand wide 1861 movement, which a lot of the smaller reduced and other uh, smaller Speedmasters do not have. So this so, was an on, this was released to replicate the watch that was first. No, okay. first first Omega in space. Yeah, so the first one on space, but not the first Speedmaster. The no, no, I know, but yeah, yeah. this is this is a replica, not a replica, but a reissue of oh, the first. Correct. The, this yes. is exactly how it looked. Um, exactly. Okay. Well, minus the sapphire crystal and a few other things, but right. yeah, it's similar to this. Um, and this is limited edition? Numbered edition. Numbered edition. So we don't know how many, but it was numbered. Okay. So, um, so it's, it's once again discontinued. People didn't think that they would uh, stop making a smaller Speedmaster uh, with the manual wind movement in it. They did. So this is now becoming a highly sought after piece because so this is what a future a future collector's piece. Uh, well, the first collector piece yeah. modern in this generation would be the 60th anniversary that came in the trilogy, yeah. which was the same size but it had the silver bezel, and this would be I think the second one along with the CK 2998s, the blue dial ones. Mm. This is the same size as that one, same watch as that essentially, just different color. All right, nice. Next one was was bargain. Or had, we had bargain already, right? We can have yeah. another one. No diver, 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 diver. diver. Okay, diver. diver. Diver and bargain. Starting at six thousand nine hundred. That's a Pelagos. Ah, yes. Forty-two Pelagos, forty-two black dial, on the rubber strap. Uh, it's a titanium case. Five hundred meters water water resistant and uh, automatically in escape off. Unlike Omega, you don't have to operate it manually <coughs> if we ever need it. <laughs> it's a beautiful watch. It comes on this very subtle um, rubber strap, which feels extremely soft and nice. And it's a, it's a lovely sports watch, a lovely diver's watch. Has presence. Has presence and um, all the hallmarks of a good diver for a very, very attractive price. 7000 yep. starting at. I didn't choose something that was that good of a bargain, unfortunately, because as, as we know in the Rolex world, bargains are not so easy to find, mm -hmm. but it's a fantastic watch. Bargains and it's, are relative. It's, they're relative, exactly. So this is a Rolex Submariner 14060. Let me guess, um, surprise, surprise, no date. <laughs> no date, yeah. no date, uh, no date, no, no. I think most everything on here is no date. Uh, but. Uh, this is one of the older ones. Uh, so this was replaced by the 14060M, which was then replaced by the 114060. Um, so this is three generations old now. So it's really pushing that neo vintage mm. slash almost, I would say it's vintage now. Um, 1990s, yeah. I believe it is. Yeah, I don't see a date. Money with these, uh, um, there's not any more mates there. Yeah. Getting so less less. exactly, they're getting less and less. It's in fantastic condition. I yeah. believe the price is twenty, starting at twenty-five. Yeah. yeah. Um, exactly. But it's, I think it's been bid already up to around thirty, if I'm not mistaken. No. Might be looking at no. the, is the other one. No, no, no. Yeah. So then this is still has So it's, it's, it is a good deal. And let's see if people follow now in your suit and bid it up to thirty. Yeah. yeah. No, I really I do like, like this one. I think <laughs> it's a fantastic. Uh, yeah. So I think anything sub thirty on this is a steal. Okay, I think last last category is dress watch, right? Um, no, everyday watch and dress watch. Everyday or watch. Not everyday, sorry. Uh, one watch works. collection. One watch collection. Okay. Uh, you I'm going. You one watch collection. No, no dress I watch. did something else, ah. but we had to swap that. Um, dress watch. Dress watch. This is the dress watch. This dress is watch. The watch. We are going for dress watch now. Yes. Okay, dress watch. Cartier Santos 100 XL. Don't need to tell any, anybody much about it. It's a Cartier Santos. It's a big case, but it's nicely shaped, so it just hugs your wrist. Um, if you want the presence on your wrist, this is your, your baby here. Yeah. You have the crown guards. It's a, it's a lovely blue strap, crocodile leather, uh, alligator leather. It's, it's just a very nice one. There's a clasp it's a, yes. in the box, so it's a, it's a freshly serviced or, or polished or whatever. It's or brand new, I don't know, but it's a beautiful condition. Of that watch, and of course, the starting price is insane nine thousand two hundred. Oh, yeah, again, it's a great starting price for wow. a classic watch. Yeah, it's classic, it's a, it's a robust movement inside. It's a ATA 2892. Um, that's before they actually started doing their putting their own movements in it, the Santos 100. But it's uh, it's just marks fantastic. the hundredth anniversary so, of Santos. Yeah, so universal. And it's one of those watches you can dress robust. up, dress down, wear casual, wear yeah, smart. Yeah, absolutely. This watch you can wear on a, on a suit or on a pair of shorts and t-shirt. Yep. Yep, next. 
Mine, next one here. Um, we got a lot of square watches today, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is the JLC um, Reverso, of course. And this is the large size dual face. Correct. So it means there's two time zones, one on the opposite side, uh, in the dark black, I believe, Correct. grayish black, uh, and then the silver side. Um, once again, it's a reversal. What That's more right. can we say about it? Um, it retails for around 40 something, 45. This is uh, purchased in 2021. So it's a very new piece with the Casa Fagliano leather strap. Um, so it's a super cool watch. And starting price, 27K. Yeah. So relatively good deal for how much they cost brand new. Again, I think like, like the Santos, these are watches you can dress up or dress down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so fantastic everyday watches. Yep. Continue. Last one. Last one. Divers. All right. Oh, so have one more. One what more. Diver? Ah. Everyday watch. Or, or diver. Was it everyday? Or we diver? did the diver. We did divers. Really? Okay. Yes. You did Pelagos. Everyday, then. Good. This was the uh, we called it the uh, one watch collection. The one watch collection. That's okay, what yes, we called it. Yes, well, we forgot the categories the already. Ah. But All I right. chose the Tudor Black Bay Fifty Four, released just uh, in March. Uh, and this is a watch that is actually pretty hard to find right now. Sorry, um, just, just to clarify, you just call, this is a one watch collection? Yes. Yeah. So this is, if there was one watch you could have. No, if I only had one watch. I know, if yeah. you only had one watch. Yeah, I would have it, yes. And you, and you chose it from this collection, you would choose this watch? Yes, correct. Because it's really? an everyday watch. Because uh, basically in a one watch collection, you need it to do everything. It has to be waterproof, has to be small enough to be discreet but enough of a tooly watch to bang around, right? And I think this fits every single one of those categories. Also, it's black, therefore you can pair it with anything. There's no clashing or anything like that. Um, this one is still fully stickered, by the way, um, from Tudor. Um, once again, hard watch to find, and you can get it right around retail. Correct. Type Correct. Piece 360. Well, just under retail with the premium, I think it falls on with retail. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, Awesome watch. Once again, brand new, just released in uh, Watches and Wonders 2023. Yeah. I do love it. Yeah, and I chose something that is also uh, unique, um, can be dressed up and down. It's a JLC Polaris. But as you can see on the three crowns here, this is not a normal Polaris or a Polaris date. This is a memo box. You see this little triangle there? That's the alarm. So you can actually move this triangle around in addition to the uh, bezel on the side for measuring time or your dive, this little triangle is the alarm function. So that means it will um, launch in a mechanical alarm that you can feel and as well hear uh, at a specific time that you set. And thanks to the really nice black rubber strap and a black dial with a bit of this uh, 14er uh, design, I think it is very sporty can be elegant enough to wear on a suit. Uh, it's a bit big because of the alarm function in it. It needs resonance to actually make a loud, loud alarm on it. But it's also watertight. So it's Would a, you it's use a, it's it, the alarm function? Watch. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great thing to remind you of, of you had, just a you little had one. You've an alarm watch in the past? Uh, sure, G-Shocks. <laughs> yeah. And you use the alarm function on them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Timer, alarm function. I like to do this right, for, for specific things that I shouldn't forget like walk the dogs or something like really where you just need a reminder that I'd you should like, do something. The reminder of a ring and I'd be like, what was it for again? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knowing what it was for. But yeah, I think this is a beautiful watch. 28,000 for um, the Memo Vox, very good deal. Yeah. And there you have it. Mm. The top seven yeah. picks from Martin and Ralph. The yeah. auction is running for an additional uh, Wednesday, 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 four days. And Saturday, 8 p.m. There is a vast range. 8 p.m. or 7 p.m.? 8 p.m. today. Okay. So we're trying a bit later. Right. Good, good. Uh, everyone will be home by then. We mm -hmm. And glue to their laptops or phones. Um, there is, a, even on this, just on this table, there's a diverse range. Ah, um, we so have 14 many. watches here, and we haven't even tickled half of the stuff that's on the, in the wall behind us. Yeah, and I think these watches, you get a feel only if you try them on. We, I had a guy yesterday who came, he was in love in theory with the JLC. He loved everything about it. He was actually about to buy a brand new one. He saw this, he came to see it. When he put it on his wrist, he found that it wasn't for him. Yep. But he fell in love with the Zenit. Yeah. So these watches, you have to try them on to get a feel. So welcome anytime, open from 10 till 8 p.m. 
and on Saturday we're open all the way until the end of the auction. Thank you to the Loom Plotters. Thank you for always being here on a Tuesday. We really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone for listening in. Enjoy the auction. Have a blessed week and see you again later. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Thanks.